Hey guys, welcome to the next video on acetals and hemiacetals. So in this one, we're going to be going over um, two very common problems you're going to see on the test, uh, what well, you could see on the test. And it trips a lot of people up because they look very daunting. You're not sure what to do. So hopefully we can make them easier. So the first one is this common structure you'll see that looks super big. There's a couple variations, but it's essentially the same thing. And one example is it'll look like this massive rings like this whole weird looking structure that you don't know what to do with and what they'll do is just they'll write okay you got some acid you got some water what's the product or draw a mechanism and you're not really sure what to do what are we going to do here so you see acid and you see water if you remember from last time that's how we usually take off the protecting group or in general how we reverse the acetal to a carbonyl. But let's see if we have an, uh, an acetal here in the first place. We see two oxygens. They're both connected to the same carbons, all right? So I'll kind of simplify it. Here's that carbon. I'm leaving all the extra stuff off. Two oxygens. And what are those oxygens connected to? A carbon, a carbon. So I'm going to put R, R. That's an acetal. So this is going to be our acetal mechanism. And it's not going to be any different from the mechanism we did before. If you remember the reverse mechanism that we did over here, one of those oxygens in that acetal grabs the H+, plus, the other one kicks it out, and the water comes in, then the water loses an H, the OR gets another H, and then the water, the alcohol now basically kicks it out, and we have our carbonyl back, and our floating around alcohols. So the mechanism is identical. Nothing here is going to change. One of these is going to grab an H+, plus. the other one is then going to kick it out. So in terms of the mechanism, identical. But here's a trick if they're just asking you for the product. Super easy, and it's basically what I showed you here. When they're asking you to remove the protecting group, I want you to slice those oxygen bonds to that same carbon and put your carbonyl there. So let's try that. Find the carbon that has the two oxygens. It should be one carbon sharing them. Slice right through it. And now I'm going to redraw this exactly the same. So if you're doing your test on Oscar and they give you this, just copy and paste it. And then there's a duplicate button that should allow you to duplicate the structures. Erase those bonds. We just cut them. Turn the oxygens into hydrogens or, or into alcohols. And now you're just going to put a double bond in O on that carbon. That's your answer. That's it. Our original carbonyl, our alcohols, and we're done. If they asked you for the mechanism, obviously you would have to go through all the arrows. But this is an easy way of getting it, getting the answer. Um, and so you'll see a bunch of different structures like this. And they could be different variations. And another common thing you'd see is they'll give you something like this, maybe in the more open chain, not how I drew it here, where it's all kind of curving up. But like an open chain, and they're going to say, what's the product? Again, take it step by step. Oh, and they'll also write on the arrow acid. And so what do you have here? Carbonyl. H plus. Two alcohols. And those alcohols have R groups. So in other words, two ROH groups set up for an acetal forming. Perfect. Do it exactly like always. Same mechanism. Notice how the mechanisms aren't changing. Carbonyl grabs the H plus one of those ROH groups comes in. Pick whichever one you want. Same thing. That carbonyl would grab my H+. Plus. One of these will then attack that carbon, or the carbonyl. And the way it connects, remember, it's kind of like this. Erase this thing and make these into real bonds.
and let's just get rid of those H's. And that's it. So hopefully those shortcuts kind of make sense. Um, now, another reaction that, or another question that throws a lot of people off is this. What do we have here? Well, we have NABH4. NABH4 turns ketones, which look like this, with just carbonyls with carbons, and aldehydes, which is a carbonyl that has at least one H, right? But And it turns them into alcohols. And remember, it does not work on structures that look like this. These structures are specifically, that can only be reduced into alcohols by LiAOH4. All right, NABH4 is too weak. It'll only work on a ketone and an aldehyde. But what do we have here? We don't have a ketone and an aldehyde. We have an alcohol and an oxygen and a ring. What do we do? So let's take a second and see what else and what this really is. It's a carbon. On that carbon, there are two oxygens. So do we have an acetal here? No. There's an H on that oxygen. This oxygen is an R group, though. It's got an OR. So that's one OR group. This is an alcohol. This is a hemiacetal. And what do we know about hemiacetals? They're in equilibrium with the carbonyl. So in other words, they can reverse back to the original carbonyl. So if we go back here to our reverse mechanism, we go to the hemiacetal part. The OR grabbed that H+, plus, and then the other alcohol dropped the double O, lone pair down to form a double bond, and that's our carbonyl. I'm going to do it the same way. Notice that I'm just taking pieces from all these mechanisms. I'm not actually changing anything about them. So I'm going to put some H+, plus just to help my mechanism a bit. The OR grabs that. And I'm now going to protonate that oxygen. And then my alcohol drops that double bond. This gets kicked out. And I have this thing. With an H. Plus, and I'll just number it in case it's a little hard to see how it broke apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we just lose that, that H. And now what do we have? Now we have our carbonyl. Perfect. Now we can do our NaBH4 with our ETOH, and it'll work on that carbonyl. The uh, alcohol stays the same, and NaBH4 doesn't do anything to it. Now we have that. So these are two really common questions. Um, they may be a little bit challenging. So hopefully that clears it up, and I cannot stress it, this enough, guys. Please know these mechanisms, how to take off an acetal, the reverse mechanism, and how to form the hemiacetal and acetals. All right, and um, knowing these mechanisms is going to help a lot. Okay, and also, good idea to use these shortcuts, because um, once you, but after you know the mechanism. So once you know the mechanism, you can then go to the shortcut, just to save you some time on the test, because to do these mechanisms on every question may be a little time consuming. Uh, all right. I hope these two questions uh, going through them helped you guys out. Um, I know this one especially. There are very similar things asked on your free lecture quizzes, lecture quizzes. So hopefully this clears that up a bit. And I will see you guys in the next video.